Hello class, this is Dr. Fenton. In chapter 3, we're going to look at the steps necessary to close out the accounting cycle. Now in previous material, we've looked at transactions that occurred during the accounting period, like during the month or during the year, and we made journal entries for those. So hopefully you remember your debits and your credits and how to make the journal entries. And now here we are at the end of the period, and there are certain steps that need to be done to close out the accounting cycle. So let's get started. First of all, let's look at when we recognize revenue. Now revenues are recognized and recorded in the period in which the goods or services are provided to customers. This is called the revenue recognition principle. Now this principle is part of what's called accrual basis accounting. And we're going to see that term talked about in just a few minutes. Expense recognition. Expenses are reported and recognized in the same period as the revenues they help to generate. This is commonly referred to as the matching principle and is part of what's called the accrual accounting system. So you can see here we have various activities going on for a cruise ship. Now if you look at the, uh, the bottom of the slide, you'll see that the cruise actually occurred during the month of April. But the previous month they had to prepare for the cruise. So they spent money for you know, supplies, materials, and so forth, getting ready for the cruise. During April, they also purchased other items they needed, such as fuel. And then after the cruise, in the next month, they paid for the salaries of the crew members. So the actual revenue was generated during, during April. And so even though we paid for expenses either before April or after April, we recognize all the expenses in the income statement during April. So this is called the matching principle where we recognize the expenses in the same period we recognize the revenue. Now this is a slide we'll look at briefly just to compare the accrual basis of accounting which is what we are studying in this in this course to cash basis. To recognize revenue you under accrual basis accounting recognize revenue when the goods and services are provided to customers. Under cash basis, you recognize it when the cash is received. So when the cash comes in, you recognize the revenue under cash basis. Under accrual basis, when you provide the service or when you make the sale, that's when the, the uh, revenue is recognized. As to the expense, in the period the costs are used to help produce revenues, that's when you recognize the expense. Under the cash method you recognize the expense when the cash is paid. So under accrual basis you recognize the revenue when the goods and services are provided and the expenses in the period when those expenses are used to help produce the revenues. Now we are studying the accrual basis of accounting because this is part of the of, of GAAP, you know the general accepted accounting principles. Here we are at the end of the year and we need to record and post what are called adjusting entries. And then we will use those to prepare the financial statements. We'll finish it out briefly with a closing process. Let's go through these steps in more detail. There are four types of adjusting entries. And these adjusting entries, what they are, are made to do is you need to make sure all of the accounts are up to date as of the end of the year. And if they need to be changed, in other words, adjusted, then we make adjusting entries to make changes in those accounts to bring them up to date so that we can prepare, can prepare, you know, accurate financial statements. The first type is called a prepaid expense. This is where earlier we paid the cash and now we're going to recognize the expense because we've used up the item. The deferred revenue, we receive the cash before we provide the service. And as of the end of the year, we provided the service and need to recognize part of that as revenue. Under accruals, we incurred the expense before the cash was paid. So we need to you know, make an entry for that. And then under accrued revenues, this is where we record the revenue when we've made the sale, even though we have not collected the cash at this point. So let's look at examples for each of these. Under the first one, let's say that we paid $6,000 for rent for one year in advance, and not just one month, but one year. 
But here we are December 1st, and we're going to go to the end of the year. And so one month rent is $500. And remember, we had to pay all this one year in advance. At the end of the year, we need to show the fact that we've used one month of rent, so we expense that. And what that will do, when we take $500 out of the prepaid rent account, that'll leave $5,500 in that account for the expense to be used up in the following year. So the December 31st adjusting entry to record the one month of rent we've used will be to debit rent expense. And you can see we are going to increase the expense, which has the effect of decreasing stockholders' equity. So we debit rent expense and we credit prepaid rent, which is the assets. So this is the adjusting entry to show the part of the prepaid rent that we have used as of the end of the year. Supplies, this is similar uh, to prepaid rent. Supplies we purchase ahead of time. So if on December 6th we purchase $2,300 of supplies on account, we look at the end of the year and see how much did we use. So we used $1,000. That means we have $1,300 of supplies left over at the end of the year that we're going to use in the next year. The adjusting, the adjusting entry is to record the portion of the supplies we've used. So we're going to debit supplies expense for the $1,000 and credit supplies $1,000. So earlier, if you remember, when we purchased supplies on account, we debited supplies and credit accounts payable. Now when we use some of those supplies, like here we used $1,000, we need to show the part that we've used as an expense. So let's debit again supplies expense and credit supplies. Prepaid expense as to equipment. Now equipment will be a long-term asset that we purchase you know, in one year and we'll use it for probably several years. Uh, buildings we will might maybe use for you know decades, who knows. But what we do is pay, you know, buy the equipment in one year and then start depreciating it off over its useful life. Now we have an entire chapter later on on depreciation expense. So don't worry about the details just yet. But just you know, know that if you say that that we're going to depreciate the equipment four hundred dollars. You know, it costs us $24,000, but we're going to depreciate part of that off this year, $400 worth. We're going to debit depreciation expense and credit a new account called accumulated depreciation. Now, the accumulated depreciation account is a contra-asset account. It belongs with the assets, but it is a reduction. That's what this slide shows. In the um, balance sheet under the um, uh, long-term assets section, here we're calling it property and equipment. We list the cost of everything that we purchased, all this you know, equipment that's going to last more than one year. We get the subtotal of $40,691. And then we're going to take away the accumulated depreciation. So the accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account. It belongs with the assets, but it reduces the overall assets. So the $19,550 is something called net property and equipment. The 21141 shows the depreciation we've taken to date on all the equipment. Here's a, a quick question. Which of the following is equivalent to the book value of an asset? In other words, what is the definition of book value for accounting purposes? You can see it's the cost of the asset less the accumulated depreciation. I'm sure you'll be tested over this. Make sure you know this, this definition. Deferred revenue. If you remember earlier, we um, had a situation where customers paid us in advance and we are going to provide services later. And when we did that, we debited cash and credited the deferred revenue account, which is a liability account. Now at the end of the year, we need to find out how much of this have we earned. Yes, they paid us in advance, but we'll start earning that as we provide the service. So if we receive $600 in advance on December 23rd, and then as of the end of the year, we provided $200 worth of services, the entry will be to debit to lower deferred revenue, $200, and to recognize that as revenue with a credit to service revenue. 
when we make this entry, in other words, when we reduce with the debit the deferred revenue account, that will leave $400 of deferred revenue on the books that we'll earn in the next accounting period. Accrued expenses. This is when we incur an expense but haven't paid the cash yet. An example would be salaries. Let's say that uh, the last payday was December 28th, <clears throat> and here we are three days later, and the employee earns $100 a day from us. So from December 28th to December 31st, they have worked for us, this person has worked for us, $300, and we owe this to them, <clears throat> but we don't pay it yet. We record only the expense of $300 at the end of the year, not the full, like, like seven days, $700 of salaries. So you have to remember, the, the December 31st is the year-end cutoff. So the adjusting entry is going to help us decide, as of December 31st, what has happened. At this point, they've worked for us $300 worth. So let's debit salaries expense $300. We owe this to them. So we're going to credit a new account called salaries payable. It's a liability account. So we're going to debit salaries expense and credit salaries payable for the portion of the salary that we owe them as of December 31st. We will pay them that on January 4th. We'll pay them the full seven days or $700 worth. But as of the December 31st cutoff, they've only earned $300 and that's all that we're, uh, that we owe them as of December 31st. Utilities is another example of an accrued expense. We get the, the utility bill at the end of the month. We've used the utilities all through December. We have usually about a week to pay it, and so we will pay it on, on January 6th. But what, would, what do we do on December 31st? We show the fact that we've used the utilities, so debit utilities expense, and show the fact we owe the money. So we owe the money as of December 31st. We will pay it, yes, January 6th, but we do owe it as of December 31st. Now, in the next slide, we're going to, um, uh, next couple of slides, show interest calculations. Now, make sure you know this formula. Interest is equal to the principal, the amount you borrowed, times the interest rate, times the time period. So, I equals P times R times T. The interest rate is always given as an annual rate, no matter if the loan is a six-month loan, nine-month loan, two-year loan. The interest rate is always an annual rate. That's why we need to indicate the time period in the formula. So in the following slide, we're going to see that the company borrowed $10,000 at 12%. And we need to compute the amount of interest for one month, just the month of December. So the calculation will be, of course, the interest is equal to the principal, $10,000, times the interest rate, 12%, or 0.12, times the time period, one month over 12. So $10,000 times 12% indicated up by 0.12 times the time period, one month over the 12-month period. So $100 is the interest. The entry then would be to debit interest expense $100 and credit interest payable $100. This represents only the interest for one month, not for the whole year, just for one month. So again, these adjusting entries are to show how things stand as of December 31st. So as of December 31st, we owe one month interest, not 12 months. That's why in the formula it was the $10,000 times 12% times 1 over 12, not 12 over 12. So then the entry again, recognize the expense, interest expense, and then recognize the amount we owe as interest payable. Accrued revenues. This is where we've done the work, but the customers have not paid us yet. So let's say that we've earned, uh, from December 28th into the year, $700 worth of revenue. They owe it to us. We will collect it sometime in January. The entry, as of December 31st, to adjust the accounts would be to show the fact that they owe us the money. So the account receivable account is the account we use, we use to show customers owe us money. So they owe us $700, so we debit that asset account and credit service revenue. We've done the work, we recognize the revenue, we have not collected the cash yet, so we show, so we show the fact they still owe us the money, you know, so we debit account receivable $700, 
and credit service revenue, 700. After you make all the adjusting entries in the general journal and you post those to the ledger accounts, you bring all the balances up to date and now you prepare what's called an adjusted trial balance. So, you know, adjusting the trial balance, this is real adjusted trial balance. Um, here you're just checking to make sure that the debits equal the credits before you move on and prepare the, the uh, financial statements. We had the trial balance earlier in the previous chapter and that's just to see, to see at some point in time before the adjusting entries really, do debits equal the credits? Then you go through the adjusting entries, make more entries, more postings, bring the accounts up to date, and then you pull off what's called an adjusted trial balance to make sure that at this point the debits equal the credits. Now to start preparing the statements, we'll see that the income statement accounts are at the bottom, you know, from the revenue down through all the expenses. The equity statement accounts are common stock, retained earnings, and dividends. And the balance sheet accounts are in the upper portion of the adjusted trial balance. So let's look at the statements. So looking at this adjusted trial balance, we're going to pull off the bottom set of numbers first, just the income statement numbers. So here's the income statement. Record the revenue, all of the expenses, and net income is $1,200. Let me go back a slide. You don't see net income on the adjusted trial balance. It never shows up there. We see all the income statement accounts. So the revenue account has that credit, and all the expenses have credit have, have uh, debit balances. So there's the income statement. The equity statement, we show that the common stock changed because we sold stock during the year. Retained earnings went from zero. We added net income that we just computed. We take away dividends. So let me go back up two slides, and you can see dividends are right here. Retained earnings had a zero balance. Dividends, uh, $200. Now notice common stock though, at the end of the year in the adjusted trial balance, it does have a balance of $25,000. You just need to remember that we changed that from the beginning of the month. And the beginning of the month, you know, December 1st, was the first day of operations for this company and it sold stock. So in the stockholders um, equity statement, we show common stock at zero. We sold stock, there's the ending balance. Retained earnings was zero, first year of operations. Net income increased at 1200, dividends will decrease at 200. That's a return of the earnings to the shareholders. And what we've retained then is the $1,000. Just bring the totals across. And now for the balance sheet, this is what's called a classified balance sheet. So make sure you prepare your, your balance sheets like this from now on. We have under assets, current assets. Current assets are assets that are either cash or will be converted to cash or used up within a year. So we have cash, 6,900, account receivable, hopefully we'll collect those within a year, and we'll probably use the supplies up and the rent up within a year. So bring, you know, so show your total current assets as a subtotal. Long-term assets, show equipment, 24,000. Accumulate appreciation, minus four. So 23.6 is the subtotal here. Add those two to get total assets of $40,000. Liabilities. Current liabilities are ones that we're going to pay within a year. So you can see items here. Now deferred revenue, of course, is one we're going to earn within a year. That is a current liability. So we bring the total here, total current liabilities. Long-term liabilities, more than a year. Drop that in. Total liabilities, make sure you show that total. Stockers equity, we have the common stock, we have the ending and retained earnings balance, and then we show total stockers equity, and then finally we show total liabilities plus stockers equity to get $40,000. So our balance sheet balances. Now go back a couple of slides again. The adjusted trial balance shows total debits 46.6, total credits 46.6. This is not a balance sheet. That's one thing to keep in mind. This is not a balance sheet. This does not show total assets and total liabilities. This only shows total debits, total credits. The balance sheet shows total assets, which is 40,000. Again, total debits 46,6, but total assets $40,000.
and then of course equity and liability total to forty thousand dollars closing entries quickly on this we'll just touch on these this will bring all the temporary accounts that we have that we've been using to zero and the temporary accounts are the revenue accounts expense accounts and dividend account since revenue has a a credit balance to bring it to zero we debit revenue service revenue and credit retained earnings to bring all the expense accounts to zero we we credit all those expense accounts separately in one debit to retain earnings for the total and what this does these two entries here is where finally your revenue and your expenses in other words your your net income increases the retained earnings account because we increased retained earnings seven thousand two hundred and decreased at six thousand dollars so this is where we finally adjust retained earnings really wouldn't call it an adjusting entry but that's what's going on we bring retained earnings to its proper balance by putting in their uh, net income with these two entries and also take away dividends so closing entries are to bring your temporary accounts to zero because we want all the revenue accounts expense accounts and the dividend account to be zero at the very end of the year so when they start the new year off they'll all have zero balances so you can keep up with just the revenues and expenses and dividends for the next year all the balance sheet accounts are permanent accounts they carry over so the cash you have at the end of one year is the same amount of cash you have at the beginning of the next year and here's a post closing trial balance if you prepare this you notice retain earnings is now a thousand dollars we have taken off all the revenue accounts, expense accounts, and the dividend account. So at the end of chapter three, there's a lot of detailed information here. So make sure you spend a lot of time with it. And so good luck with your studies.